Thanks everybody for joining us. Um, partnerships are the relationship and glue that can help all companies become su successful, regardless of what type they are. No company is their own island and um, they can't do it alone. It's not efficient, it's not cost conscious, and, and honestly, I imagine it's quite boring. So partnerships are the lever in which we can move mountains with a joint effort. I'm Marissa Fayer, the CEO of Her Healthy Q, and I'm honored to moderate this episode of Her Talks. It's a discussion series which where we bring together different minds, different industries, and different opinions to talk about a chosen topic. The, the discussion that we're focused on this month and this quarter is nonprofits and for-profit company partnerships and how partnerships such as these can have, um, can, can really help your business. And it's a significant value to both sides, both the nonprofit and the for-profit com companies. And we want to hear from both sides of the aisle. So we have some great, in incredible um, uh, speakers here with us uh, today on why it works for both, why it's important, how it should be done, and how we can make it better and easier. This is a discussion that's really important to Her Health EQ's mission to providing healthcare equipment to developing countries with a focus on women's health, uh, non-communicable diseases, because all these diseases can be detected, prevented, and treated with equipment if only they had it. And we do our work by partnering with others. For us, partnerships is a key value of who we are as an organization. Um, we're deployed in nine countries and we clearly could not do that without partners. So I'm humbled and honored to be joined by these incredible panelists and I'm gonna let them do their introductions of themselves and we're just gonna do quick intros and then we're gonna jump into the discussion. So um, I, I see you closest on my screen. Um, so Carol, um, Carol Stern is the executive director of the Walton Family Foundation. Do you want to do a quick intro? And then we can go to Bonnie sure. and then Karen. Sure. First of all, hi, everybody. Thank you for being with us today. I am Carol Stern, the executive director of the Walton Family Foundation. After about 43 years of nonprofit and for-profit experience, mostly nonprofit, and most recently as the executive director of UNICEF USA for 14 years before I joined the Waltons. Bonnie? Okay, so great to be here, Bonnie Gordon. And um, I was lucky enough to be with Walgreens uh, in cause marketing for almost 20 years, um, which was fantastic. Uh, then uh, the executive director of Susan G. Combe in Chicago for a couple of years. And now very lucky to be with Vitamin Angels, um, which is an incredible organization that helped women and children in 65 countries and all 50 states and uh, in Puerto Rico. So just humbled to be here with my wonderful um, co-panelists here. Thank you. Karen? Hi, nice to be here with all of you. Uh, I'm Karen Kay. I'm heading strategic partnerships for JVP. JVP is a VC uh, with a very unique model. We are also uh, busy in building communities around tech. Um, so, <clears throat> so we are VC with the social uh, with the social uh, also activity. So I think it will be interesting to hear everything today. Thank you. Great. And it, at any time, if there's anybody in the audience that has any questions. Um, feel free to write them in the chat and we'll try to answer them um, uh, shortly. So in our pre-chat discussion, there was a lot of similar, similar themes that came up between all of us and what we're working on and what we're passionate about. Um, obviously it's partnering for, for a better society. So that's why we brought these experts together. Um, I haven't seen a single company do it alone. And even if they're not announced relationships and they're informal relationships, they're still partnerships. So in order for nonprofits and for-profits to work together, there needs to be alignment on the work and the mission and the purpose. Um, and that's that, those are some obvious themes. And both sides can really benefit to, to these types of relationships. Um, there's obviously nuances between all of them. and um, But everyone that joins into a partnership, typically with a nonprofit, wants the best outcome. So, so let us just kind of dive in. And, and Bonnie, in our pre-discussion, you were talking about um, and mentioning the, the the few key elements that are necessary for any type of partnership. Can you can you kind of go through them briefly for us and for the audience? Sure. Um, 
And again, everybody defines a partnership differently, but really a successful partnership is like a marriage. And there's lots of things that, that make it be able to withstand the test of time. I think that there's three key components. Um, one would be, and I call it authenticity, and this is something I talk about all the time. It's got to be a strategic match for both the nonprofit and the for-profit. It's not just about um, making money for the NGO. It's really about what the partnership can do um, for, for all involved, um, whether that's differentiation, community support, et cetera. So I think authenticity and making sure that that can withstand um, scrutiny is very, very important. The second being that commitment. And I look at commitment as internal buy-in. And so um, being from the top, uh, you know, the, the bottom up, the top down, um, but making sure that there is buy-in to this partnership so that um, it is, and it is a unique commitment, a unique partnership so that it's not just a, an offering, if you will, a pull down menu to say, okay, for profit, here's what we have to offer for you and then keep talking. It's about a commitment that's unique, that is um, something that stands out, that also will help both, but also again, very ownable. And I think that that's important. Um, the third part of it, is something that I think both have to think about and have buy-in and that is success metrics. So that when both look, especially the for-profit looks at, is this successful? Has this met our needs? Are we going to re-up it? Are we going to uh, you know, provide the resources? It allows the evaluation of the partnership to be done beforehand, not necessarily afterwards as you're looking at it. And that also allows the partnership to grow and everyone to learn um, from what's been done and what will be done. That's really great, Bonnie, thank you. Um, it's, I, I've already taken a whole host of notes, so <laughs> thanks. Um, and to dovetail onto that, Carol, you were mentioning in our pre-chat, you know, one really very key mindset and alignment shift that that you've started to take on at the Walton Family Foundation, um, and, and you mentioned a common ground versus common solutions. And I just would love to hear, because that dovetails onto some of the things that, that Bonnie was saying, can you tell us more about it, like why you made the shift? why, how it's changed your, your partnership model, because I think that would be really interesting for some of us to understand. And Bonnie, I took notes also, so thanks. Um, you know, I would add just a couple of points to what you said, and, and then I'll answer your question, Marissa. I think also it's really important, like an element to the success is clarity, not only on what you want to accomplish, but how you want to. And oftentimes we talk about the what and we don't talk about the how. And I think if you don't have the pre-talk on how, then then your partnership has troubles down the line. So that would be the only thing I would, I would really add. Um, you know, we have been talking about partnership at the foundation for a very long time, recognizing that we do granting at a level where we could go it alone. We recognize that the problems that society faces today are huge and none of us have a singular answer. And that if we don't intersect the sectors, the nonprofit sector, the corporate sector, and the government sector, I want to bring the third one in also, we're, we're leaving, you know, ideas on the table, we're leaving opportunities to bring something to life that can be sustained on the table. So when we saw that coming out of COVID, you know, we saw that the best solutions were ones where the sectors intersected. But we also recognize that the way we've defined partnership is collaboration in this nation has been, let's find the people with whom we have common ground and let's bring them together and work together on this common ground. And what it has done is instead of finding solutions, we have really driven wedges between those we have common ground with and those we don't. So we've inverted that and said, instead of finding common ground, let's agree to the problems we're trying to solve. Let's look for common solutions that may not require common ground. 
And that means sometimes having strange bedfellows. It really means with intention, putting at the table the people you do not agree with. So you're not working and working and then at the same time arguing and arguing. <laughs> But instead, coming together and saying, here's a problem. We want, we all agree we want our kids to have a really good education. We may not agree on what that means, but we agree we want it to be quality. So how do we ensure that every child in the country has quality education? Let's find common solutions. And then we can come back to common ground and separate if we need to. And have you changed how you partner? shifting to this this common solutions well i think again having the how became right. as important as the what because we've got to really have some ground rules for how we're going to work um, one of the things i've learned really from working for the walton family i mean I, I wish i could tell you it came years ago but i i think i really solidified it in the three years i've been with the family when you have 27 family members trying to agree on their philanthropy that is sometimes, you know, common solutions comes to play instead of common ground all the time. And we've learned to really like one of our rules, ground rules for a how is, you know, curiosity, not animosity. So when we don't agree, approaching that with curiosity, can you tell me more about why you feel that way? Can you help me to understand why you feel that way? Is different than, I don't agree with you. Let me tell you how I feel. So it's, it's curiosity instead of animosity. So it's the how that has changed. Um, making sure that there are voices at the table, not assumptions made about what those voices might say. And I think that's one that we've done with great intention in the past three years, because very oftentimes we take a pejorative approach when it's when we're trying to represent groups. And that's not truly partnership or collaboration. So that's a second change that... Um, has definitely happened. And then it is doing the research beforehand to identify the partners with whom you may not agree and to find what you could work together to solve. So much of this is about trust. And when you work together on a common solution, you develop the trust that enables you to get through that which you don't have common ground. That's fair, completely. So Karen, it might seem weird for a VC fund to want or even need to, to partner with nonprofits because that's not core to who they are. So why is it important for, for JVP, for Jerusalem Venture Partners? Why is it kind of core to, to who you guys are? And you know, is this something that also maybe other VCs should look at as opposed, you know, in instead of just here, here's some money, like you, you guys partner with them and work with them. Um, is that like why why is that important to you? So first of all, I'll go back to the word authenticity. Uh, it, needs, it's, it needs to be really like rooted in the DNA of the company. So uh, JVP was founded by Erel Margalit, uh, and his uh, like a, his social uh, activities were always as important for him as uh, the for profit. So the authenticity is there. I'll go back again to uh, my. Uh, my panelists, uh, and I agree that a partnership is like marriage. And I think that involving governments uh, is important, but stability and long-term relationships are maybe even more important. And, you know, administrations come and go, but if you're like in the private sector, when you know that, you know, you're here to stay, then you can really exhaust, you know, make the most out of partnerships and really walk together uh, long-term and, and make thing happen. Be things happen because it's always hard. It's always, it always takes time. So for us, we're here to stay. And that's the reason that we also invest our time and resources in nonprofits. I want to say that as a as the person who's heading the strategic partnerships, I have like uh, a banner over my laptop uh, in my office saying, uh, good ideas need friends and new ideas need friends. And I think that's it's coming from a humble point of view because we don't know everything. We're in the business of building strong companies, not in the business of lending money to entrepreneurs. And when you build, when you build companies, 
and you need to build communities and you need to really understand you know what those communities really need and what do they want and how can we work together and you know it, it's the days where businesses were on this podium most important you know we are everything our way you know in the past and we do understand now that everyone is looking for something bigger than what we are, uh, organizations and individuals. So we as a VC, we give that to our entrepreneurs, to our portfolio companies, to our, uh, to our teams and employees. And, and it's sticky. We see, you know, we, we see the results. So we, so we keep doing it. And listen, you're a you're a venture fund. You're not an impact fund. So, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, 100% like, it, you know, you don't have to, to hit your mission. Do you also trickle down the idea of nonprofit for-profit partners um, to your portfolio companies? I mean, I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's a strong suggestion um, as an investor, but I, I mean, is this something that you look for as well? Not only something that we look for, it's something that we help them with uh, as we help them with marketing and, and, you know, finding clients and, and, expanding to new markets we also help them finding you know their meaningful place or where where they can contribute one of our portfolio companies tetere um just you know they're adopting schools and are doing like robotics uh projects with them and the kids just won first place 10 days ago and the happiness in the you know in the vc and of course in the company, but for us, it was as if they signed, you know, another contract with a gray, a big client or raising uh, more funds. It's, 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 it is so meaningful that we celebrate it as if we're, you're celebrating uh, fundraising. Uh, so we definitely encourage our companies and we see that happening and we see what it's doing. Again, we do it for the good it does, but the side effects are so marvelous the side effects for the companies you know uh employee retention and and those young people and we're so happy to see that that they're looking for more and and yeah and we engage with them and they are happy to help and the fact that we encourage them to take time off and to not attend a zoom meeting in the afternoon but going to the school and the, and the fact that not only we accept it, but encourage it is something that we see. Uh, we see we see the fruits of it uh, in our in our patrol companies and our teams for sure. Wow! And I think wow. you just. But one of the things I think for the nonprofit side is that we have to also recognize that you are in business to make a profit, and that there's nothing wrong with making a profit, and that we shouldn't be bringing you ideas for partnerships that aren't going to be positive to the business as well. Like you shouldn't have to apologize for that. And, right. and I think many nonprofits have approached it without that understanding. Right. I couldn't agree more with you. I tell you, Carol, um, that company, that for-profit company making a dollar and being successful is, is extremely important. Um, the Vitamin Angels Walgreens partnership, which is going on 10 years now, which is amazing, is built on this 1% of every single vitamin purchase, right? That is made in every single Walgreens store. While that's helping your family stay healthy, it is also helping a, a woman and child across the globe or even across your next to your neighborhood. So for Walgreens to have a differentiation that they can speak of, right? Because you can buy that vitamin at another drugstore or at another big box, but to buy it at Walgreens really does make it so that yes, it's profitable, but yes, it's also making a difference. Um, so that hit me what you just said. But the other thing about these partnerships is the ability to pivot. So things change. Look at COVID. Look what happened. And um, we actually were asked by Walgreens to increase our domestic um, impact. So in the United States, um, not giving up that international, but the domestic became even more pivotal because there was so much suffering and so much uh, health and wellness issues in right in our neighborhoods. That trust and I, I keep going back to what you guys have said the ability to trust and communicate was wonderful because 
Walgreens came to Vitamin Angels and said, how can you help? How can we do this together to be even more impactful and to turn up the heat, if you will, on that impact domestically? And, and we were able to deliver. So again, that trust is really important in that communication, I think. And, and yeah, two things to that point, you know, that you made me think of. One was when I was still at UNICEF, we had a partnership with Pampers. And for every pack of Pampers that you bought, we donated or that the proceeds donated a tetanus vaccine. And I know when we were originally measures of success, you know, to Karen's point was how many vaccines did we get into the arms of how many moms, but measures of success for Pampers also was lift. How many more packs of Pampers were they going to sell? And we had to make sure that we were really good promoters of a product that was saving lives. And that's what I mean by having both sides take responsibility and, and understand that there is a business imperative here and that that's okay. Um, but on the trust factor a campaign that we had a partnership with the Home Shopping Network, the first year that we did the partnership, it failed. And I was dispatched to go meet the CEO to apologize, CEO to CEO for the million dollar partnership at that time, a long time ago when a million dollars was really a million dollars. And it, and it just, it didn't lift their business and it didn't meet our impact agenda. And I sat down with Mindy Grossman, who was the CEO at the time, we didn't know each other. And Mindy looked me in the face and said, okay, we screwed up. How, what are we gonna do next time? Not how do we cancel this now? She's now one of my closest friends as a result of that, because we took off our gloves, we sat down, we said, okay, what are we going to do together? Because history can't write this as a failure. And the next campaign was phenomenally successful. And we went on to do many more together, both at her time at Home Shopping, when she went to Weight Watchers, I mean, what she's doing now. I mean, I think trust is the key factor. Absolutely. Sorry. I, no, no, no. I, I think it's incredible. So you guys have said some examples, uh, you know, from both sides. And, and so like, how can nonprofits and for-profits be better partners? Because, you know, Carol, the fact that you had to go and almost apologize and thank God you had somebody on the other side, like Mindy, who was saying, oh, well, let's make this better. But like, that's not always how it works. And so no. like, <laughs> how, how can both nonprofits and for-profits, because listen, it shouldn't always be the nonprofit that has to go and apologize. It is could also be a for-profit or, you know, both sides have to work together to the common goal. So how can, and this is for, for everybody, for, you know, for the entire panel, how can both sides be better partners to each other? I think starting with what Bonnie said, those three elements, okay. adding the how, agreeing, you know, I think we all agree measures of success need to be outlined and defined so that we all know what we're trying to do and we can really assess a partnership. And then knowing your lane, it's not my place to tell Pampers how to market Pampers. I am not a marketing professional. I'm a, I'm a humanitarian professional. And it is not their place to tell me how to fight tetanus, okay? That's the humanitarian side of it. So understanding what each of your roles are I think many of the partnerships that we saw born out of COVID stretched our lanes a little, but the most successful ones were ones in which we took our expertise and applied it to our own lanes. And so, you know, when, when Mary said Ford will make PPE now instead of making cars for a while, because that's what the country needs, she knew she had workers who knew how to do that. She knew she had distribution, like she was able to step in and say, here are the steps that will need to be put in place that we can do. And here's what we can't do. So here's what we're going to need. And then nonprofits were able to look at that and say, okay, we know how to do this, this, and this, and we can fill those niches. And government was able to step in and say, okay, you're going to do this and you're going to do this and we're going to do this. And we each brought our expertise to the table. You know, I'll, I'll add to that. Um, when you look at this, at these partnerships and the strength of them, it is important. I kind of say, if you build them, they won't come. It's you promoting these partnerships and telling people about them 
and finding a way to amplify is is really really key because if someone doesn't know about it the the constituent the consumer whoever you're trying to get to and the beneficiary isn't aware of the programs and i pro, i say programs but i'm talking about tangible impact then that differentiation that strength of the partnership isn't as strong. So telling people about it and amplifying it in whatever ways that each can do, I think is really, really important. And the other part is this transparency piece where um, the NGO needs to say, here is our impact. Here's what we're doing. And also I believe needs to say, and here are our pain points for profit partner. Can you help there? Because we don't have a multi-million dollar, whatever it is, whether it's shipping, whether it's marketing, whatever it is, and, and really putting the resources together to talk about this partnership is really important. So that ongoing communication, that transparency, um, and that ongoing, again, dialogue seems to be, um, is, is extremely important, I think, for the strength for not not only the partnership to survive, but for it to thrive and grow in the in the years ahead. Great. It's interesting that you're talking about transparency from the side of the nonprofit because I'm so used to take the responsibility, you know, on myself and and be very transparent with the nonprofits that we work with, explaining exactly what is it that we want from this partnership. And it's okay for other organizations, like it's not our thing, but for other organizations, so it's, all, it's like, okay to say, we want reputation. We want a better reputation. Listen, we had this, we want, to, we want to actually do something, but we want people to acknowledge that we're doing it. So we need it for publicity, it's okay. I mean, th the agenda, as long as we are all clear on the agenda is always legit. Um, and I will add one word to, you know, trust and transparency and all those uh, important things. I will add um, patience. Mm, good word. I think that, you know, we're also proud of this uh, dynamic world we live in and everything's moving so fast and it can create such a frustration because, you know, a for-profit, they can go into the room, tell the employees what to do the next day, like, okay, well, let's see what nonprofits are, you know, is, is, is a different creature. And, and I think patience is key on both ends of the partnerships. And that's the reason I started with, with the, I think with the unique standing of, of the private sector, because we have the patience. We, specifically for JVP in building companies, it doesn't take a year. Sometimes it takes three, sometimes it takes seven. We have companies that we keep, you know, working with for, you know, for 10 years now. Um, so it's okay. Let's build KPIs that are, you know, that are realistic with, on, a, on, a, on a timeline that we agree on. Let's take, you know, let's breathe and, and see. And also for ROI, it's okay. Sometimes it takes more time than we think. It's it's what, like you said about pivoting. We can pivot the, the business plan. We can see that, you know, this route, this channel wasn't as effective. Let's choose a different path, knowing that it will take another year, another six months. Again, it depends so much on the subject matter, but, um, but we need to be patient. I will take another minute or 30 seconds to tell you, to, to say something about what we're doing with communities um, in Israel's periphery. We, we work with entrepreneurs, with you know, people who can't, like, can't get access to the, with the big VCs usually, and we work with, with companies that we don't know if we'll invest in them like eventually. And we work them and we invest with them in them. Sometimes we don't invest in, like in, in any company that we worked with the incubators and the accelerators. But sometimes we find the best solutions after a year, after two years. So it's also um, the patience is also to keep looking um, because like any partnership, it's not even about nonprofit with a for-profit organization. Everything is like, uh, you know, 
sometimes it, you need time and uh, partnership is always about a win-win and it takes a little time to, sometimes to, to find that win for both sides. But I think also it takes understanding, not just patience with each other, but then understanding that, you know, the best solutions are often community driven. It's the people that are being served the closest to the problem often have the best answers. And it's recognition that there has to be equity at the table, that you have to bring diverse voices to the table. And it's understanding that you can't always come from the outside with a solution. You can provide support, you can provide financing, you can you know, offer your resources, but you can't come with the solution and say, here, use it. And I think that that's the piece that often gets lost, you know, well, we'll, so I'll use the Pampers example. Well, so great. Now a vaccine is available every time that pack of Pampers gets distributed. But that doesn't mean that every woman in the village is willing to come get the vaccine. So then it's really sitting with the community and talking about why they would or wouldn't and what would make a woman feel safe if she's never had a vaccine before. And can you help us create that safety? Not coming and saying, we know better, this is good for you, come and use it. Right. And that points to what you were saying, understanding your roles, because yeah. it's not Pamper's job to tell the women in the community that they should be getting a vaccine. That's your job. Right. And, and I think that's understanding roles. And, and I think a lot of people sometimes forget that nonprofits are companies too. They're just not making the shareholders, the founders, et cetera, rich. The money goes back into programming. And so you're still running a company. And, and you know, Karen, you were saying that this is also part of, you know, part of the core of who you guys are. Like, yes, it's patience, it's time, but you're still a company. So whether it's, you know, everyone said it, whether you're investing money or marketing or time or all of these things, that's why there's so many pro bono, um, you know, uh, support out there. And maybe a corporation can help the nonprofit on something. And so there's different types of partnerships, but a lot of times people forget, you know, as a nonprofit founder, people forget that it's nonprofits are companies. I, as the founder, I'm just not becoming rich from it. Like that's not the intention of that company still set up as an LLC, like still set up as a company. And, it, you know, there's just different governing structures and unfortunately often have to rely on other partners, but it's important to understand that the company has their job to do and then their partner has their job to do. And, and that's kind of understanding the roles and who's doing what, but a lot of this kind of a lot of the partnerships that I've seen um, and, and you know, th that are highly effective, quite honestly, they're very marketing campaign heavy. And sometimes it's it seems like they're less focused on impact. And is it just because people don't want to see the impact or they don't care as much? You know, sometimes I feel like the beneficiary, the the the, the company that's partnering with a nonprofit gets a bigger uplift than that than almost the nonprofit sometimes. So it seems like, and we were talking about this a little in the, in the, in the pre-talk, like there's a lot of marketing that has to get done to make all of this successful. Because in reality, you know, Carol, like you were, like you were saying, I mean, I'm sure Pampers would do it because it's the right thing to do, but listen, they want to sell more diapers. Like it has right. to do marketing. And that's okay that they yeah. do. <laughs> Yeah. And so like, why, why is the marketing, I guess, so important? Is it for, and Bonnie, you were saying it as well. It was more like, because you want to go to Walgreens versus going to Dwayne Reed or CVS. Is, is that like, is that, is that where the company's mentality and mind shift is? Like, we want to sell more of what we're selling and become the differentiator and like, yes, we're doing great too. And it, it you know, like, is you know, that Marissa, I think this goes back to this commonality this reason for these authentic partnerships. Walgreens is about keeping people healthy, keeping you know health and wellness at the top. I mean, think about it years ago, would you have ever thought you would have gotten a flu shot or a COVID shot at a Walgreens pharmacy? And now it's commonplace, but it's that trust, which is about you, the pharmacist is the last free healthcare in America. Let's look at that. And it's right in everyone's neighborhood. Therefore, when you, when you come with an issue, you trust that person in your neighborhood. That pharmacist is again, that trusted person that's sitting there. 
in your neighborhood. I look at vitamin angels in the same way in that we partner and make impact in communities all over the United States as well as the world, but we do it through community partners who are trusted, here we go, that are, that because it's not just, as, as, as Carol said, it's not just about that Pampers. It's not just about when we provide a prenatal vitamin or vitamin A, it's about the education and who's delivering that education and that message that I would trust. Does that person look like me? Does that person, do I have a commonality? So again, I go back to that important and, and what you said is about marketing. I think it's impact is always the most important thing because then you have true and important marketing that you can do that again, again, provides a differentiation. So I don't think personally you can have one without the other and that tangible impact makes it easy and, and makes it a, an important thing to do that marketing. But the last thing I'll say is it's an internal marketing essential. So you have to tell all of the internal stakeholders at the for-profit as well as the customers. So you can't do one without the other. If somebody, you know, with your campaign, if that internal communication is not there, makes it very difficult then to tell someone about it when that education hasn't been done internally. And I do think I, I appreciated, you know, Marissa, your comment about nonprofits or businesses too. You know, one of the things that I was amused by was when Wall Street was crashing, there was a, I won't name them, but a very large insurance company across the street that went under from yes. where my offices were. And we watched them carry their boxes out. And a couple of days later, I began to see a whole lot of their resumes and they would come into my office and say, I'm ready to bring you my business acumen. You know, you're in the nonprofit world and I can bring this to you. And I would say, but you're going to have to give me something more than that because I've just watched you close. OK, so and I'm running a half billion dollar organization in the United States with all the same issues. I've got staff, I've got payroll, I've got a board of directors I'm accountable to. I have, I have the business acumen. You've got to be bringing me something other than that, you know? And so I think it, the respect issue has to be there. The, the nonprofit is not your little sister or your little brother. They're a full fledged adult also. And so I think that's important. But to answer your question on marketing, it is about voice. So many of our problems that we're trying to solve will require education to the community. And most of us faced in the nonprofit world when we raise that dollar and we have to make a choice, do I buy an ad? Do I tell the public or do I feed a child? We're gonna feed a child. We don't have huge marketing budgets. So we are dependent on our corporate partners for their marketing budgets. You know, and that's why I said, but we have to remember at the end that we're not the marketer then and respect the expertise of the other lane. That's a great point. That's that's all, yeah. I mean, it's not, we're not looking, it's, it's exactly like marriage again, because we're not looking for a partner that is exactly like us. Right. We're looking for, you know, complementary skills, complementary capacities. Um, and, and that's the, that's the idea with a good uh, and strong partnership. And um, you know, if they want, if for the, you know, if for one partner, marketing is the most important, and they want to focus on that, as long as you know they're giving the resources they need and they do whatever they need, fine, okay. The agendas, as long as they're on the table, are and of course, legitimate or, or okay. And they make the most sense when the corporation and the nonprofit, like when the corporation has agency related to what the purpose is. So Vitamin Angels and Walgreens, you know, to Bonnie's point, Walgreens is where you go for help. So it makes sense. It's, it was such a, a, a natural partnership. Pampers with UNICEF, natural partnership, both care with mothers and babies, you know. Um, when I think about the work that I'm doing now with the Walton Family Foundation along the Colorado River, where we're looking at serious drought and we're looking at how do we solve those problems, recognition that we have the ability to um, expand a voice 
for the tribal community that might not have the power of a microphone that we carry. So it's not always dollars. The partnership can also, as I said, is what you can bring to the table that you can share. Couldn't agree more. You know, and, and Carol, the resources and what you said, Karen, it's resources aren't always dollars. They're resources, whether it's Again, as you say, marketing, whether it's IT, whatever it is that that for-profit certainly has more potentially more resources to bear for this partnership. But that's that's why being transparent and saying what's keeping the nonprofit up at night um, with regard to the impact and and again, what's keeping the for-profit up? What are the, is there a new product that needs to be um, talked about? Is there a new initiative? And being respectful that, and I, I feel strongly, again, being on both sides of it, to know that that for-profit has a lot on their plate, that this partnership is one very important aspect of what everyone's involved with. But also, there are a whole lot of other things that are on their plate that we need to be respectful of. Um, and time, everything is is you know is a resource. So we have to be, I think, respectful of one another when we look at what we ask and know that there it comes back to patience. Know that you, as a nonprofit, it may be front and center, but this individual or these individuals are dealing with a whole lot of other. Um, challenges potentially and opportunities that they're trying to solve too in their everyday you know work right that's a good and, point and also that we will solve some things because of the expertise we bring you know i look at environmental issues and it takes the store saying we're not going to give you a plastic bag anymore to get the people to stop bringing expecting a plastic bag um it takes, uh, you know, we, we very much know that the water, the, the biggest use of water in the United States is agriculture. And if we want to improve agriculture and we want to have sustainable agriculture, we're going to need the, you know, the distributors of the products to begin to demand that the creators of the products use sustainable practices, which means we're going to have to get the consumer to demand you know, those kinds of practices, which is a movement that takes marketing. And again, so it, it, it will require all of it. It will take some government regulation. It will take, you know, we're not, none of us can solve that alone. Totally. You know, I agree. Yeah. And if there's I any questions that. from the audience, I just wanted to say, if there's any questions from the audience, please write them in. Go ahead, Karen. <laughs> So JDP is a thematic VC. We uh, Our legacy themes are fintech and cyber and food tech. But we've now entered the, the climate tech uh, space because, again, it aligns with the values that, that we bring that, is, that are the DNA of our, of our VC. And when we work now um, on climate tech solutions, it's the number one area that, A, needs a global effort, um, and B, we need to really understand what's you know, what's more important because maybe renewable energy is the most important that maybe there are enough solutions around that. So we are partnering not only with the, not only with the UN and the EDC, uh, but with, you know, smaller, more local, uh, local nonprofits to hear what our community needs. And we are, you know, we are based in the heart of Soho in New York. Let's see what what the what this community needs it's an urban thing it's not a you know climate tech is so vast and so such a wide subject so we are doing a lot of work with nonprofits to really understand like what are what are the priorities that we choose uh, and they're always connected to the communities that we live in and to our partners no, that's great. I have some uh, audience questions. So um, actually, they're both kind of uh, tied together. So um, how do you find appropriate partners to work with? And what advice do you give to like new nonprofits to find for profit partners? Because I mean, I can tell you from her healthy cues experience, besides going after, you know, companies with health, you know, aligned health condition, you know, priorities, you know, there, there's other things because as we work in both women and health, and global. I mean, I could literally call any organization if I, you know, narrowed, you know, if, if you put it, you put it in those terms. So 
you know, how how do you find appropriate partners, um, you know, I guess from the nonprofit side and also from the for profit side, because not all for profits actually have a division in a department or or somebody assigned to do this. They still want to do it instead of just fielding like, oh, my friend, um, you know, she has a nonprofit and um, I think we should support them, which is lovely. And I hope that I can ask any of my friends that, too. But, you know, there is there a better way? Like, how do you find better, you know, how do you find these partners to, to partner with? It's not like there's like a website that lists them all, which if there is. Well, there are some organizations that are matchmakers, but right. Um, right. there are a lot of organizations actually, and there's some for-profit organizations that are matchmakers and there are some nonprofits. But for the new nonprofit to answer that question, because I think I hear that one a lot, yeah. you know, I think first and foremost is you need to sit down and figure out what your value proposition is. What are you bringing to the table that would make someone want to partner with you to begin with? What do you offer? And almost every nonprofit is, quote, doing good. So the fact that you're doing good can be on your list, but that's not a value proposition in and of itself. So do you offer a really strong local audience? Do you offer a really strong national audience? Do you offer a really strong global audience? Pick your companies based on the answer to that question. If your value proposition is that in the, you know, the area of Bayside, New York, you have a really large voice, pick a local company. If on the other hand, you have a global footprint and you see a company trying to expand into some of the countries you're working in, pick those are the right folks to talk to. You know, you try to put your value proposition on the table in the same way you would launch a product. And Carol, and I, I, I agree fair. with you completely completely there was um when I was at Walgreens there was a, a small nonprofit that came in and wanted the pin pad right and I I remember saying you're going to drink from the fire hose if you have an 800 number that you're going to put up and a company is you know fortune 50 is going to do that you are going to implode so so not only make sure it's a match you're right local versus local national or international uh, matching, but also that you've done your homework to say, what is it that you want to do together? Not again, I go back to this laundry list of saying, here's a sponsorship for a race. Is that really giving your potential partner that what they're looking for? And go back and look and see who are they currently partnering with? Um, are they are they marketing it? And then what is it that's coming into their lane that's very important and go in? So do your homework. From a for-profit standpoint, I think it's that all aspects needs need to work together. So for Vitamin Angels, we've got marketing and merchandising and operations and and government affairs, all of them are, are lockstep in sync so that they know, you know, that the ESG numbers are, are going to matter as well as whatever we're going to tell the consumers. So the stockholders as well as the, the consumers are important, but it's that, I think just as you say, we go back to what Karen said, it's the patience and taking the time to do the research so that when you do get that PowerPoint in front of someone that you're not just talking, but you're doing an adequate, great job of listening and you've done your homework when you finally get that to get that meeting. Absolutely. So we just have a minute or two left. Are there any parting thoughts from uh, from anybody? I mean, I think we've said a lot, so. I, I guess I would just add, you know, to, to, to drive home the point, and I shared this, I think, with you in the pre-meeting, the most successful partnership I ever participated in was in the wake of the Puerto Rico storm. And, and it was a place where UNICEF had no staff on the ground. So I didn't know how to respond. And I looked around to see who was responding that we could partner with, who would have agency, who could respond. And I saw that the governor of New York had flown down there to ask the governor of Puerto Rico, what do you need? So I called the governor of New York to say, what are you doing? And I was impressed because there was a respect for the fact that the community needs to be part of the solution. And he shared what he had, and he had all of this wonderful access to clear regulations to get supplies out. He had a warehouse at JFK 
but he had no means to raise money. He had no knowledge of what the its were that were needed. That's things that I could do. And on my board was the CEO of UPS, and he had the ability to run the logistics on the whole thing. And the three of us came together and he told us he had 500 drivers on the ground with trucks and fuel when no one else had trucks and fuel in Puerto Rico. And so we were able to find the supplies in our warehouse in Italy. The governor was able to work with government to clear regulations to get them expeditiously moved to the United States. UPS got them from the United States to Puerto Rico. The drivers put them on their trucks and UNICEF helped them to figure out the nonprofits on the ground to deliver them to. We each brought what we did best to the table and we respected each other that the expertise of each of us was able to accomplish something that we couldn't have done individually. To me, that's, just, that's what a partnership is. Totally, and as proud partners with UPS Humanitarian, I fully support that they are the best at They're getting phenomenal. things all around the world. Phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. So, I mean, I think we all could talk about this for for hours on end, and and we have, and we will continue to do so. But um, and thank you all three of you for being here and to take your time out. Um, please join us on March fourteenth um, in New York City in person. Um, for a special night of networking, discussion, and live her talks. And we're going to be celebrating International Women and Girls Month with a special event that actually um, Karen and her team at Jerusalem Venture Partners are, is hosting at their New York City office. So if anybody would like to attend, please let me know. Um, until then, reach out to any and all of us to be part of and continue the discussion. Um, Kelsey, I just saw that there was a question that came in. So I'll I'm actually you. responding to her. Oh, <laughs> good, because I was literally like half typing it up. So good. And um, so if there's anything that obviously her LTQ can do to support anybody, please reach out to us. Um, we thank you all for being here and um, happy almost International Women's Month, uh, which is coming up in March, which we're all obviously very, very excited for. And so, um, yeah, if there's anything else that anyone wants to, to chat, please do so. But anyway, thank you all for being here. And uh, if you're off, have a great rest of your day off. <laughs>